started, I did a play in high school, Palos Verdes High School, and I had so much fun. And I was like, this is bitching, you know? But I never imagined that I would be able to be in a surf movie. I didn't think they made surf movies, you know? It's like, I think North Shore was like my fourth or fifth movie that I did, like a surf movie. That's different, you know, for a surfer. So I read this thing and I went, I gotta play this part. I really wanna play this, this part of Turtle. When I got to come over here, it was the, it's still in, you know, I don't live in the past, but I mean, that was such a wonderful experience because I was, I'm a surfer. I like, started coming to the North Shore 40 years ago, you know, and I've been coming to the North Shore ever since. It doesn't, but, that, but I got to be in a movie, and since then, four movies that filmed on the North Shore. And when you do that, you work with the same people all the time, Brian Killon, you know, Terry Ahui, and then the locals, Kai Garcia, you know, these guys take care of us, you know, and it's embarrassing at first when you realize what a kook you are from the city you know, and how hard these guys are working to make you feel comfortable and safe and what an incredible job they're doing. How many times they pulled me up going, okay, it's shallow there, come on out. But it's like, you know, go, go, John. Like they, I never would have gotten those ways or been able to surf pipeline like that or, you know, been protected. But, it, you know, working with Jerry Lopez and Larry Hamilton, that, that was a dream come true. Yeah, I see a lot of those people. And um, Matt Adler's like my best friend. Like we had so much fun. We've been friends ever since that movie. And we used to go on surf trips. Like I, we went to G Land. We went to Tavarua. You know, back in the day, we went to Puerto Escondido. You know, and then he quit surfing. And he called me up because I went to Indo this year. You know, when I got off probation, it was awesome. And I posted a bunch of pictures. He goes, John, I want to go surfing again. He quit surfing. He gave me all his boards. He's giving me a motorcycle. He's a super generous guy. And I, I go, you do? You want to go surfing again? It's been 20 years. And he's like, yeah, I want to go to, I want to go to the Mental Watch. I want to go to like Kandui Resort. Like, so I go, let me help you with this. You know, and I did all the research and I was like, this is the best place. You know, we'll have, he goes, I haven't surfed in 20 years and I'm not going to surf before we go. It's going to be so much fun because I love surfing with that guy. Because when we surf together and we did this back then, this 30 years ago during North Shore, we're like little kids in the water. We just make fun of ourselves and everybody else. We, all of a sudden we're 14 years old. And I think that's one of the greatest things about surfing. I mean, unless it's super <laughs> heavy. But uh, I don't put myself in that situation so much anymore. But when we, we are free like little kids and we have so much fun. So we're going to, I'm really looking forward to that. Matt Adler and I are going to go to the Mental Eyes and surf like, and it's just, I can't wait. I don't, we're not bringing boards. We're just going to borrow boards. It doesn't really matter and just have fun. And it's going to be awesome. Most famous male surfer. Most famous male Very male. important yeah. distinction. Most famous male surfer in the world because it's not, I know, fame is a vapor. Fame is nothing. You don't, it doesn't necessarily correlate to skill or talent or courage or bravery or, you know, doing something for others. It, you can be famous for fuck you, the shape of your body. It doesn't correlate into anything. Ah! Ah! <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. It's a long story, but I'll, you can cut in between. Yeah. I was out of control for a while. Like, I, 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 I was addicted to drugs and alcohol and my behavior, my I warped my brain and my behavior was getting uh, antisocial, dangerous, belligerent. I became angry. I was getting in fights. I was, you know, in, I'm, I'm a blackout drinker, you know, like I don't remember a lot of stuff. There's no excuse for anything I ever did because I knew I had a problem with alcohol and I'd lost my faith. I'd kind of lost my way and I'd had a relapse. And I just got horrible. And I was looking around for rehab. I had no money. I was looking around for rehabs. They're all really expensive. I had no insurance, you know. And, the, you know, I went to a doctor and said, like, hey, I, I, don't have, I can't afford a rehab. You know, can you give me what they give people at, you know, the nice rehabs? And he's like, okay, I, I, I will because I know you and I know you struggle with this. But you cannot drink on this medication, you know. I'm like, great. I never want to drink again, you know. Like, and I, I was taking that and I was in a blackout on Ativan, you know, and I finally found myself alone with no supervision. I just, and I'm an alcoholic, so I just went and got some alcohol. And I don't really remember the sequence of events, but I know I f found myself with a loaded weapon, 357, walking around outside in the Palisades. I'd gotten in a fight with my girlfriend and God bless her, you know, she was scared. And, you know, she should have been because I don't fuck know what I was doing with a loaded gun. And when I was outside, I, I saw my landlord in my building. I live in a really nice, I, I used to live. I've been evicted from that place, a really great neighborhood in the Pacific Palisades. And he's like, hi, John. And I'm like, hey. And I got a hand on a gun and he called the cops. And she, my girlfriend had called the cops. And so I had a, thank God for this. I had a moment of clarity. I kind of realized this is how you die. This is how you get shot. 
this is the cop's job is to shoot you at this point. And it, it's too bad, but that's their job. They've got to protect an innocent person. And I walked across the street and I went, I, want, I wanted to live. I realized I want to live. I don't want to die like this. This is, I'm going to get killed tonight or I'm going to kill somebody. And I went over to his house. I knocked on his door. I go, Gary, he was, in, he was in Big Wednesday. He's a surfer, actor, full cowboy, understands guns. And I surf, with him. I love him, live across the street from him. Bam, bam. He's like, what? I go, I got this gun. I'm drunk, man. And the cops are calling. You could hear the sirens. He goes, give me that thing man go over there and surrender you know like in the ivy across the street you know he took the gun he called the cops he unloaded it I went out and for some reason I kind of went back into this blackout thing I like to run from the cops you know I'm in a black overcoat and I'm like they think I have a loaded weapon and I I, I was trying to get back into the apartment crawling through the dark but they won't chase you into a dark alley when they know you're you have a weapon because they want to go home that night and um, they don't know what's what's happening but they came in pointed their weapons right at Lance Carson's chest like I live with Lan you know right underneath Lance Carson who I love he's a great guy and he likes a nice quiet peaceful life they pointed weapons at his heart you know and I like I'm peeking up in the ivy you know and they I'm like I surrendered and these cops are like were you in Tombstone because <laughs> they like westerns you know because that's a gun movie and I'm like yeah and I was so high and happy I was actually tell you the truth I was relieved to be arrested I didn't I was just desperate, you know, and I needed an intervention, and I got one, you know. If looking back on it, it's like you wanted an intervention, you know, or you wanted to die. It was like live or die. It came down to that. But I was so glad to be alive and that no one got hurt. I was handcuffed in the back of the car. Cops were my best friends at that time. Like, were you in Point Break? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, what was that like working with Gary Busey? Like, you got shot at the airport. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And they're talking about Tombstone. We love Sam Elliott, you know? Like, what, what was Val Kilmer like, you know? And I'm talking to them. They're my best friends. And I go into jail, you know, and everything changes, you know? And um, I was in there for a while. And by the way, if you haven't been, LA County Jail, you don't fucking never want to go there. It is the worst, scary, I was petrified. I'm like this, I'm 55 year old actor, I've never been done serious time. I'm not even considering myself a criminal, but I am, and I was. And I'm in there, and it's like, I'm scared to death. I'm like, I'm in a mixed place before we go in, we're processed. Is this too gnarly to talk oh, about? This is great, as long as you're comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it because it was so uncomfortable. I'm sitting in there and guys like, we're coming, this guy just squats down, takes a shit, you know, like his face is covered in tattoos. I'm just going, looking at him and he pulls something out of his ass and he looks at me and goes, you got papers? And I'm like, what? He goes, papers, papers. And I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. And he'd pulled out a bunch of meth, like a handful of meth out of his ass. And he was just, people just started swarming over to him and it's packed. And he's just handing out, you know, meth. There's no politics yet to anybody, you know, black, white, you know, anybody who wants drugs because he's got it up his ass and he can't bring it in. I didn't have any problems. I, I, they ended up, I'm, God, thank God for, you know, the LAPD for arresting me for one. And then the sheriffs took care of me and they're like, they detoxed me from alcohol, which is what I was trying to do before I got arrested. Please detox me, but I didn't have any money. Well, the state did it for me. I didn't have any money. I didn't have to pay for it. They have to take care of you when you're addicted to alcohol because you can die from withdrawing from alcohol. I don't know a lot of people know that. So I got detoxed in jail, had a wonderful experience that was at first terrifying and then ultimately boring and just frustrating. Every day I love my life. You know, I get up every day and thank God that I'm alive for one and that life is fucking great. I love my life, you know, and I've got so many friends and I'm healthy and I get to go surfing and work in TV and movies and travel and I just love being alive, you know? I got this cool motorcycle I like to ride, you know? I love this little dog, I love my friends, I love my life and I'm grateful for it. Appreciate the moment. Don't live in the past, you know, don't anticipate the future because you might be worried or afraid of what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, it's not happening right now. And don't hold on to any negative memories of the past. And if you just are in the moment, you know, enjoying the day, you know, at that time, if you have a negative thought, try to change it to a positive thought because we're all so lucky just to be alive this day. And this is where life happens is in the moment, you know, and you have a choice. You can change the way you react to things. You know, if you're, if you're thinking negatively or reacting negatively, you have a choice to be positive, you know, to be grateful that you have this opportunity and to see what, what happens next. It's a beautiful adventure and a mystery and you don't know what's going to happen, but to appreciate the fact that it's happening now, I think is, is the secret to my happiness right now.